Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these cute little baby mittens. Um, you could use these as scratch mittens because the stitching is quite tight and I don't think little fingers can poke through. So um, I'm going to show you how to do these now and for this tutorial I'm using this uh, DK. Uh, this was just a, a, a ball that came in a pack from um, a store in the UK called Aldi. It's lovely and soft, um, pastel shade. It's a three-weight, and um, but you can use any DK three-weight yarn. Um, and I'm using a four-millimeter crochet hook, and I'm using this um, clover and more because I'm trialing these at the moment. You're going to need a scissor, pair of scissors and a darning needle which is in my box. I'll just move that out of the way. So how we start this particular um, mitten is with a magic loop, magic ring. Some people call it different things but um, I've got a very easy way to make that. And I'm going to show you that now. Let's just move this one out of the way. I will say, though, if you wanted to make this smaller, all you need to do is less um, stitches in this beginning. I'll, I'll explain. So my magic loop, then, all it, I do is simply make a loop. Simple as that. And then I get my hook, and I put it in, and I pull my yarn through it. And then that's it. You have made your magic loop. It's simple. Um, so now I'm going to chain two, which is yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. Now this is going to count as my first stitch. So in my magic loop, uh, which you can pull a little tighter if you think it was too big, I'm going to put a further 11 stitches and I'm going to do a UK treble crochet, which in the US is a double. And to do that, we yarn over and we go into the centre of the ring. So we're going over this kind of knot, yarn over and pull up the loop. So we've got three on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. I'll zoom in just a little bit and show you again. So that's, we yarn over, go into the center of the loop. We're going over all of this, yarn over and pull up a loop. So there are three, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So if we stop just to have a look, that's what we, we've got at the moment. We've got our two starting chain. Now some tutorials will tell you to do three, but my um, stitches are only really the height of two. And if you do three, then you sometimes, you can see it kind of curving. If you did three, you get quite a big curve. But when you straighten this up, that's the right height. So anyway, I'm going to do a total of 11 of these, so there are 12 stitches all together with my two chain. So I'm going to do that again, I'll show you one more time. It's yarn over into the loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. All of the stitches that are in this tutorial, I do have stitch tutorials for. We're going to do a UK treble, which is a US double. We're going to do a half treble, which in the US is a half double. And we're going to do a UK double, which is a US single crochet. So all of those stitches are in this tutorial. So if you want to familiarize yourself with those first, then by all means, uh, watch the tutorials. I do have a playlist for absolute beginners and one for stitch tutorials, they're all in there. So now I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to count now and I, if I'm doing it silently it's a little boring for you but if I'm counting out loud it's going to put you off. So I will pause the video and come back to you when I have a total of 12 stitches including my starting chain. All of them into this loop and over this, um, this tail as well. Now I've completed all of my stitches and I can pull on this and close that. You don't have to close it completely. It, it won't really close completely securely until we sew it in. Uh, once we've done exactly everything and we want to sew in our ends etc you can pull this tight and you have to really secure that if you don't want it to work its way loose again.
So I was going to show you how you can make this smaller. Um, this is, I wouldn't say massive, but newborn babies can come in all shapes and sizes, as you know, and some have tiny little hands. If you wanted to make this smaller, you could just do 10, including your two uh, chain, or you could drop this down to a four ply in the UK, which I believe is a sport weight yarn in the US. So you could just drop it down to the next size yarn and then make use a smaller crochet hook to the corresponding yarn size. So there's various ways that you can make it smaller. If you use a chunky yarn quite often and do the same amount of stitches, that also has the same effect. But with it being on this side of the hemisphere anyway, spring and summer coming up, you don't really want chunky over here. So now what we're going to do, this is our first chain that we started with when we did our first two chain and there's the second one and we're going to slip stitch into there. So we're just going to pop our hook in, yarn over and pull through both the, hook, the, the loops. So now we've, made, we've secured our, our ring and I'm going to pull that tight. It might work its way loose but it doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm not going to make that a loose chain because I want it to just get me sort of up a little way but I don't want it really visible. So now I'm going to do two half treble crochets in every stitch around so that's half double in the US and I'm going to start with the same uh, hole that I have uh, that I have where I just did my slip stitch so it's this one here so I'm going to do two in there and we just pull up our loop exactly the same way and with a half treble or a half double in the US, we just pull it through all three. Simple like that. And I'm going to do another one in the same place. So I'm pulling up my loops. I've got my three on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So now I'm going to do two in each of these stitches all the way around. So I'm increasing from 12 stitches to 24. So at the end of this round, you need to make sure that you have your 24 stitches and just go in each stitch that you've uh, you can see the V of the stitch and just do two in every stitch simple as that I'll do one more with you and then I'm going to pause the video because it's boring to watch me go all the way around and I'm going to just do two in every one and I'll meet you when we get back here. So just be careful when you get to this part, it will look like you need to do more because of this, um, this stitch here. But as long as you have 24, you've done enough. I'm almost at an end. I've got this one left to do my two in. And I'll just want to show you what I mean, that when you get to the end, you might think you've got to go into here, but this is really where you've uh, where you've started. So now I'm just going to slip stitch into my first stitch, same as before, but I'm going to go through both loops this time. Make sure I do anyway. And now I've joined. So now our work looks like this. So this, you have just made this top part here. Now we're going to not do any more increasing at all so I'm just going to do one chain I'm not going to do a big chain and I'm going to do one stitch in every single stitch around so starting in the one I've just done and so at the end of this round I'm going to have 24 stitches still and I'm just going to do one half treble that's a UK half treble or a half double US in every single stitch and you'll notice it will start to curve it will start to pull up and um, you'll think that you know it's it doesn't look right but it, it will work out just do one did I do two in there it's hard to see with the camera in the way but no so just do one in every single stitch all the way around okay so I'm going to leave you to do that I'm going to pause the video and I will catch up with you when I get to the start, which will be around here, you can see it's starting to pull up and curve because we're just, um, we're not increasing anymore. But that's perfectly fine, that's what you want. So I'm going to pause it and I'll catch up with you when I get back to the start. I'm all the way back to the start. This is my 24th. And you can see it's come up like a little cup. So I'm just going to slip stitch 
into my first stitch you don't have to it doesn't matter if you go into the two loops like I just did or if you just dive straight in it doesn't make any difference so now what we're looking at this is the right side and this is inside out so I'm just going to pop it round like this it doesn't matter if it pops back you can always uh, sort that out now what we're going to do now is we're just going to continue exactly the same with a small chain and one in every single stitch around and we'll need to do a total of um, nine rows including our first so you can easily count the rows you can see the little line so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine so I'm going to just pause the video now and come back to you when you've completed nine rows they're all exactly the same just one small uh, chain one stitch into the stitch you've just come out of and then one all the way around that's all we're doing we're just repeating that over and over again until our work measures a total of nine rows and you can see them quite quite clearly there there's one two three this is the fourth you can just see the little rows there so once you've got nine rows um, I'll come back to you so this is what it will look like I'm on my very last stitch there just going to complete that one and slip stitch into my first stitch just as normal and I'll pull that up and then we can have a look at it and this is what it will now look like the, my hole has worked its way out just a little bit now it doesn't really look big enough does it but it will it's kind of deceiving how um, once you start putting the rest of it together it does um, does look a little bit bigger so in this row we're now going to make the um, the little gaps for our tie and how we're going to do that is same way as we did before we're just going to do a little chain to get up now in our same stitch we're going to do a UK double crochet which in the US is a single we're just going to put our hook in and pull our loop up we've got two on the hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through both of them and that's the stitch we're doing in this round and we're going to do two um, chain not baggy ones just two chain then we're going to skip one stitch and we're going to do another UK double or US single in that stitch and that's our repeat we're just going to do two neat chains skip one and do our stitch so that's what you're going to be doing all the way round until we get to the other side and I know that this means that you've got too much of a stitch count with doing the two um two chains here but that doesn't matter it works out in the next round so we're skipping one and we're going into the next one and I'm just um, going to pause the video now and I'll catch up with you when we get back to the start okay so that's my two chain for my last one and then I'm just going to slip stitch into my first stitch there we are so now we've got a whole row of these little gaps now we're going to put the fact that our stitch count is wrong although it doesn't look like it is does it we're going to put that right now so we're going to do one small chain again and in this um, our first stitch we're going to do one I'm sorry no we're not we're gonna, <laughs> not going to do that at all we're going to do a half treble crochet in um, our stitch so we're going to do one in this stitch and then we're going to do one in our space one in our stitch and one in our space and we're just going to get our stitch count back to normal so one in the stitch there one in the space so I'm going to pause the video and carry on until I get back to the start again and I'll pick up with you once we get there so I've made it all the way around I've done my last one I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch and now I'm just going to do one more row and um, so that's one chain it's not a big one and one stitch in every single stitch around this is just to make a little cuff so um, that's exactly the same as that row 
So I'm just going to pause the video and catch up with you when we get back to here. Okay, so I've made it all the way around and I just need to do my last one. And then I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch. So that is my, my chain there. I'm just going to slip stitch in. And now we're going to do our border. So I'm going to do one chain. And with this uh, border, I've chosen to do um, this little, little fluty edge, this little scallop, if you like, little shell. And this is something that I, I've done for many years. And a little while ago, I did a tutorial on it. And that just reminds me, I haven't sewn my ends in yet. That just reminds me I haven't picked a winner because I asked if people would... Um, name that for me that name this edge in so how we do that is ever so simple and if it doesn't work out with the amount of stitches at the end it doesn't really matter so this is our first stitch here's our second and in our third we're just going to do five um us singles or uk double crochets so that's three or five we're going to skip two and in the next one we're just going to go ahead and do another five and then we're going to skip two and do another five and on my last mitten my stitches worked out so I either gained or lost one but as you can see that just makes this nice little not over fancy uh, edging so how you can adjust it if when you get to the end if it doesn't work out is you can just do it by skipping one if you want to so or um it's ever so simple it's just you know you don't have to be absolutely precise oops Nearly lost that one. So I'm going to skip two and go into the next one. And then on to the next one. Skip two. got a feeling when I get to the end this one won't work out it always never does when you're on camera and so here we are um, if I skip two I'd be in there so I can just skip one and then slip stitch into my beginning stitch Like that grab my scissors cut a nice long tail so that we can sew in and we end off by doing a chain and cinching it really low pulling it down and then out and then we'll just sew that sew that in so that's how it's looking at the moment and all we've got to do now is make a little tie and make a little cord just dropped my yarn bear with me a second it's a long way down and um that is very very simple to do all we're going to all i'm going to do is make a chain so i'll pop them over there out the way and um, just make a slip knot now i normally just wiggle my slip knot but just in case you don't know how to make a slip knot i make a loop and then i put my yarn through it and pull it and that's nice and simple that's how my mum taught me when i was young to do it and then I cinch it down a little bit. Now it doesn't matter about the tail because I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to do a chain of 50. I'm sorry if you can hear my washing machine. It's a very long way away, but it's a loud machine. So how we do that is just simple chain, yarn over and pull through. And I'm going to do a total of 50. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that because um, 
it's very if it's if I'm quietly counting then it's very boring and if I do it out loud I'm going to put you off of yours so now I have a chain of 50 I'm going to cut off but I'm going to leave a nice long tail and just end off and pull it very tight and I'm going to get my other end and pull that very tight as well and that end I'm just going to snip off not going to leave a massive amount just a little snip off and it doesn't you can tie your ends in if you want to but I find that that just look makes it look a little bit like there's a big fat lump on the end and it doesn't look particularly nice so I'm going to move the yarn now with my nice long tail I'm going to thread it into my needle or bodkin or whatever this is a blunt end needle let's thread all that up and then I'm going to put it through it so I'm going to like decide where my my end and my middle is so perhaps that's my big that's my front so I'm going to just go in and weave it in and out of my posts on that round leave a nice amount there and just carry on weaving it in and out of my gaps that I created I think my needle might come unthreaded if I'm not careful we'll sew those ends in as well and then we come out so there's just this one in between which is nice and then I can pull that out and pull this through a little bit so it's an even little tail and I'm just going to snip off this one as well now I find I've never had one come open but if you have one come undone you can just simply make a new tie if you've got lots of this yarn and if not you can use contrasting colors as well you can use a contrasting color for the edging so all you have to do now is make your little bow now you can make your tie with a chain you can use ribbon or um, you can do anything really but I've just made it with this little chain um, just to show you how to do it but I think it looks kind of cute and nice but at the same time it's quite functional because little fingers are not going to get through here and scratch themselves so now all we've got to do is tie in our ends and secure them off but what I will say to you is make sure turn it inside out make sure with this one that you are extra vigilant so um how I normally do that, I've got a little bit of speck on there, a little bit of fluff, which we don't need. Threadle up my my needle. And I'm going to pull it tight so that that's holes nice and closed. Because this is the inside, this is where I wish I didn't have the blunt end needle because it's um, harder to get through when it's tight. So I make a loop and then I go back through the other, other way. So just go through it like that and it makes a knot, pull it tight. And then you can just sew it through your row of stitching with my blunt end needle, which is not easy. So this is where I had the sharp one would be like easier. But you just wave it through the stitching so that it won't be coming out. Just going inside that first row that you've cinched and it won't come out. And you've tied that, well, sewed it into a nice nice knot as well. So and then we can just snip off. So it's gone all the way round. And then we just make sure that we bury these and I always go through um, a nice thick part of stitching through back, go through it that way and back that side. And then you can turn them in the right way. So that's the only one I've got left to do. May as well do it, mightn't we, really? I have got the other glove, obviously, but finish the one I'm doing. As long as you're working on the inside. So you need to, as this, you don't really want that to be showing. So I just usually get my work and I pull it down a little bit. So it's kind of facing this way. And then I just sew it through. Like that. And go through a row of stitching. So I'm just going to go 
along here for a little way until I can get it in there and then I can go around this shell it's not so easy with a blunt needle as you can see much much easier with the sharp one I should perhaps go get it but it's in my other yarn box uh, so a uh, hook box so like that and then you can just bury that in you can go back the other way which will be absolutely oh no it's done it it's going to say be virtually impossible with the blunt one but it went through see it's not come through the other end can't see it so now it's gone two ways you can do it even further if you want if you're worried about it so cut that off all ends are gone pop it back in the right way and if you wanted, as I say, to get um, a, a prettier tie, that's fine. I've done these stripy, where every row was a different colour. That looks kind of pretty. And I've done them um, where the, the edging and the tie is a different colour. So if I'm making um, some baby clothes that are blue and white, then I might do this all white and this blue with the edge in blue. It's just, um, there you go, two to match. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, the notification bell. You'll be informed when there are new videos and uh, tutorials. So thank you very much for watching and uh, bye for now.